Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2022 film The Invitation. And yes, there's another film called The Invitation from 2015. I would recommend watching the 2015 one over this one for sure. Heard some good things about this one. I'm not a big fan, but that doesn't mean that there won't be fans out there because I know there are. So that's a good thing. So if you have a differing opinion than me, or if you have the same opinion, you can go ahead and comment on this video. And even though this is going to be a no-spoiler review, you can do spoilers in the comments. So go ahead and do that. Just know. And while I'm on that subject, please subscribe to my channel. I usually say this at the end of the videos, but please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video or any video I've ever done, that is your best way to repay me. Also hit the notification bell button. Then you know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing at least for a week, which I think is a good amount. Let's get into The Invitation. Now, this film is directed by Jessica M. Thompson, who also did The Light of the Moon and some episodes of a show called The End. Uh, written by Blair Butler, and some people may say, that name sounds familiar. Yes, Blair Butler wrote the scripts for Polaroid and Hellfest, which I despised Hell Hellfest. I thought it was terrible. Um, but I know him most, and a lot of other people will, from G4 TV. Yes, when G4 TV was a thing, Blair Butler was involved, and it is that Blair Butler. Uh, also, I think he, before he was doing G4 TV, he was on, like, The Real World or Road Rules, one of those MTV reality shows. So, he's had a pretty interesting career. I'll say that much. Uh, this is a PG-13 rated film, although... It has been said that there's going to be an R-rated version released at some point on a streaming service. I mean, it's streaming right now on Netflix, which is where I saw it. It just got added when I'm doing this review, and it's not definitely not the R-rated version. So I don't know when that R-rated version is coming. I don't know if also that what I read that there will be an R-rated version was at false. But this is PG-13, so for anyone who has a hard line against PG-13 horror... This will not be for you. Uh, although, you know, there are plenty of good PG-13 horror films, in my opinion. Quick synopsis. Don't want to give away too much. It's about a woman who does the genealogy thing, you know, where you, like, spit in a tube, where you swab your mouth, and then you send it off, and they're like, these are, this is your genes, this is your ancestry, and then you can kind of get online and connect and find other people who you, you know, have as, like, long-lost relatives. So she does that. She finds out that she has a connection to someone in England who then invites her to a royal wedding. Uh, and so she feels very out of place. She goes there, and it's a horror film, so some things go wrong. But I'm, that's where I'm going to stop it because I don't want to give it away if anyone wants to watch it. Immediately, you can tell all the portions shot in the dark settings will be dark to the point that you can't see much. This is one of my biggest gripes with the film. It always super, super bothers me when it's not lit well enough in the dark scenes that you can see what you need to see in the scene. This is a film that's supposed to be professionally done. It should be lit properly. There are independent films that have a lot of scenes in the dark, and you can see everything you need to. The lighting in this is garbage. I don't understand why this stuff is allowed to come out. I mean, it's not Alien vs. Predator Requiem level, because that's like the worst I've ever seen, but it's not good. When people are in the dark, you can use lighting. I, I just don't... This is one of my biggest issues. If you're a professional filmmaker, you should know things need to be lit enough for your audience to see what's happening. Looking at the dark and not knowing what's going on, you might as well just not even have the scene. You might as well not have it. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox on that one. Uh, it's a pretty, a, a pretty compelling portion before the title screen, but it also hints, I think, a little too strongly at what's really going on with the film. In particular, there's a line of dialogue in it that I was like, oh, I feel like this could be revealing too much. And in the end, I ended up being correct that for me, it revealed too much. But that might just be me because I do kind of watch the film in a different way when I'm reviewing versus when I'm just like watching for pleasure. So um, that might just be a me thing, but I felt like they gave a little too much away. But it is interesting in the beginning. They do kind of hook you and make you kind of sit forward in your seat a little bit and say, okay, you got my attention. Where are we going with this? 
they do a good job of endearing the main character to you. I think the main character is believable. I think she is likable for sure. And I think they develop her pretty well. So I like that. I like the depth of this character. A bunch of the other characters, not super well developed, but there could also be a reason for that that, you know, I'll be able to kind of give them a pass on that. But the main character is the most important because you need to like that person. And you do. There is a weird obsession in one of the scenes that really bothered me with there's this obsession with leaving space in the frame to the right of the characters. I did not understand this choice. Like literally it's shot like this. So like it's two characters talking and it's like I don't know if that's your right or left cuz everything's So like each shot they were sitting across from one another and each one to their right had about this amount of space on the side. And there was nothing back there to look at. There was no point in doing that. It was a really weird shot choice. And they were going over the same shoulder. One of the rules in filmmaking is you don't point at where the camera would be. So if you're going to shoot one person, you shoot straight over one shoulder. And you shoot the other person straight over the other shoulder. You don't shoot them the same shoulder. Like, that's a one, you know, like filmmaking 101. So I just don't understand. Don't understand. Really odd. But it was small. It was just a little portion of the film. Early on, there's an aspect of this film that felt like the film Get Out to me. And towards the end of the film, there's an aspect of it that felt like the film Ready or Not to me. Both of those films vastly better than this film, in my opinion. Uh, but you do, I did get that feel. A little get out in the beginning, a little ready or not in the end, but don't get it twisted. It's not nearly as good as those films, unfortunately. At times, the score is very overbearing. This is another one of my pet peeves, is when the score is yelling at you, it is leading you way too much, and it is treating you like you are a moron <laughs> that you can't figure out when something's supposed to be scary or when something's supposed to be intense, and they do that quite a bit in here. I have a problem with the music for that reason. Not the composition, just how loud it is and how much it's screaming at you. There is a romance aspect of the story to this uh, that's so over the top, it made me want to puke. Um, it was sickly sweet. It was unbelievably saccharine. Just cliche, not great, too much. And they went after it way too hard. I was just like, you know, hit the brakes a little bit. Let's ease up off this a little bit. We don't need to go this hard on this. That's they spent too much time on it as well, in my opinion. This movie is pretty slow. Everything is also pretty drawn out. Uh, I forget, the runtime is, I think it's like an hour and 48 minutes or something with, with uh, you know, in the end credits. But um, it's slow. The pacing is not good. Pacing's pretty bad, in my opinion. This needed to have easily a half an hour cut out of it, potentially more. Just saying. The dialogue is well written. I do have to say that. Blair Butler has a flair for actually writing good dialogue, in my opinion. But the film basically talks you to death. That's the other thing. There's not enough doing. There's way too much talking. A lot of the dialogue ends up feeling like it's rehashing things. This goes back to the film having bad pacing and feeling like it's way too long. Because they keep talking about the same thing. You keep getting deja vu because you're like didn't characters just talk about this haven't we already dealt with this can't we move on just saying the set design and costuming is really good i really enjoyed the set designing and costuming whoever was in charge of that stuff did a stellar job uh so they deserve a lot of credit for that one there's a moment that's supposed to be a big reveal in the film, but you see it coming a mile away. It is very, very easy to see where it's going a bit before they're going to actually do it. Actually, a decent amount before they're actually going to do it. Because there are another, there are a few other things that kind of hit hint, I think, too strongly at what's actually going on with this film. So when you have this big reveal, it's not really a big reveal. You're just like, oh yes, and now we're re revealing what I knew was happening because you telegraphed it too much just saying 
They do a series of flashbacks in this at one point uh, to point out things that are more significant now that they have, now that that you know something about the film and they happened previously in the film. But it really just ends up feeling kind of insulting to the audience, in my opinion. It is kind of like this, in case you're stupid, uh, remember that this happened and this happened. People will remember that, okay? This is one of these the films that really talks down to the audience, and it's a thing that bothers me. It really bothers me. You know, screaming at people with the with how loud the score is, being like, you're supposed to be scared, idiot. This is supposed to be intense, idiot. Talking people to death, acting like we need it rehashed because we have, like, goldfish memories. And, and the fact that, you know, they do this reveal and then they're like, here are all the flashbacks of stuff that you missed because you're stupid. And it's just like, people are smarter than you think, filmmakers. <laughs> I'm just saying. You are not the only smart ones. Audience members are smart, too. The ending is lame. It is lame. It is not believable for what the story has already woven. It's not a good ending, in my opinion. Some people may really enjoy it because there is kind of a bit of an empowerment aspect to it, which is cool. That aspect is cool. But overall, it's a mm, really just at the end, in my opinion. I view this film as another entry in a tired and uninspired subgenre of horror. That's my feeling on it. I can't help but think there's a statement here about Meghan Markle, by the way, uh, and her perceived relationship with the royal family. Just going to say, the lead actress looks a little bit like Meghan Markle, and there's a lot of stuff that they have that could be mirroring what someone who's writing a script might think about the relationship that Meghan Markle has with the royal family. So I did find that a little bit interesting, assuming that that was actually part of the point of the film, but it may not be. It may just be something that I read into it, but I did enjoy that aspect of it. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I am going to give it two stars. Now, I'm sure some people were thinking, oh my gosh, he's going to go one and a half or one. There's good some, some good technical stuff in it, other than some of the you know, like those small se sequences that I was talking about having some camera work problems. I think the directing and cinematography was actually quite good. And like I said, the costuming and set design was really good. The acting was really good. The dialogue was really well written. So there's a lot of good stuff in this. I just think there's a lot of story problems with the film and the pacing's really bad. Things like that. So out of five stars, two stars. Obviously, I did not like it, but I would love to hear from people who actually did because I'm always interested in hearing differing opinions on the films that I review, good or bad. Uh, but just give me, you know, put it in the comments. Give me like a sentence or two. Let me know why you liked it or also why you didn't like it, whatever. Um, because sometimes when I hear a differing perspective on these films and I hear justification for it or read that, uh, it makes me consider it in a, in a bit of a different way. So there have been times when people have been like, yes, but did you think about this about the film? And I'm like, no, actually, I didn't consider that. And that does make me like it a little bit more. So I'm persuadable. I'm definitely persuadable. But at this point in time, this is my review. Hopefully people enjoyed it. Do me a favor, hit subscribe to my channel, like I said in the beginning. Hit the notification bell button, all that jazz. But thank you very much for watching this video. And until next time, keep it brutal.